Hey guys, this is HD. Today I'm coming in to talk to you guys today about how to maximize your agility and change the direction. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not a coach that's going to say, hey, I don't believe in ladders, I don't believe in many hurdles. Um, it's not something that I use consistently within my training. I use tools as needed. If an athlete needs to work with a ladder or it's something that they're used to doing that can get me the desired result, guess what I'm going to do that. If an athlete it needs to learn a different skill and needs, needs to use many hurdles, guess what, I'm going to use that. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're a result, results-driven um, company and I know I like seeing my athletes move fast. I know I like my athletes being explosive. Like, some people argue against ladders, but then you look at some of the fastest guys, like Tariq Hill, he's out there doing tons of ladder work. And it's like, just because he's doing it, it's not what makes him fast because he's got tons of God-given ability. He had a great coach in uh, Diego Flacker. Um, but at the same time, these are things that he's used for a number of times. So, you know, we don't know how it's going to affect taking out of his diet. Now, just moving forward for, for you guys. Now, agility and change of direction. Agility, change of direction aren't exactly the same thing. You have change of direction and agility, but agility requires something specific, meaning an external stimulus, something for you to respond to. A coach saying, hey, this way, that way. Hey, a red light popping up, a green light popping up, a ball being dropped. There has to be some, some form of external stimulus or else you're not doing agility, you're just doing change of direction. Now, that being said, I feel like you should always start with change of direction and some footwork. Whether it be in a session, whether it be in a seasonal plan, because if you don't know if an athlete can A, get into the desired position, you're kind of wasting your time. You're setting them up for an injury. So we do tons of different types of foot placement drills. We do tons of things to address athletes feeling proper shin angles and proper body placement before we even get into any kind of, oh, hey, go this way, go that way. And we do it in a basic fashion. We move forward, we move backwards, we move left, right. We move 45 degree in every angle. We move 180 degrees, okay? We go backwards and we come right back downhill. So one of the things we talk about here is shin angles and foot placement. Acute shin angles, these right here allow you to accelerate. Perpendicular shin angles, meaning the, the foot striking straight down. That's what happens once an athlete gets out of an acceleration and gets into top end speed. Um, and then obtuse shin angles where they're slowing down or braking and so that they can stop, come to a good complete stop. You notice here, if you can see that, the guy is down in a seated position because usually when you decelerate to stop, you're going to load over your base of support. You're going to be slightly behind it initially, but then you're, you're good. you have to settle over the top of your feet. Okay? Now, perpendicular shin angles, usually people coming out of brakes. Getting up tall and running, this is chasing someone down, this is if you're in a little cross, uh, you know, you're, you're going downfield, you're going uh, through the midfield, you're going to be up tall, you know, you may have some slight angles, acute angles as far as in weaving, but more, majority of the time your foot's going to be hitting the ground straight up and down. Acute, this is right here is like your 5-10-5, you change the direction, going back and forth, this is you playing defense, you know, you can, you're going to see this in a lot, and this is also for for most of you, is just accelerating the straight line to work in max velocity. All right, second, from change of direction work, meaning, hey, I've seen that you can get into a cute shin angle and get out with your body, with your with a good body lean, and you're not out of balance or out of control. I see that you can apply force. I see you're putting your foot on the ground in the right places, but also applying force to the ground. So. Now I understand that you're able to do what I need you to do. You're not rocking back on your heels. You have good balance over your feet. And like people don't spend enough time in this area and they want to get right down to this down here. And we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later because there's, there's a time and place for everything. Now, number two, pro 
progress agility is difficulty. So now when you move into agility, I'm a I'm a type of a single response guy, you know, starting with auditory. Because athletes usually like if they're on the field to play, they need to be able to hear. Because coaches are always, hey, get down, get to your left, get to your right. I think that's always gonna be the baseline, auditory cues for an athlete, because now they're looking at you, they're paying attention, they're focused, they hear the cue, they respond. Next, single response with a visual cue. Hey, here, that way. In, break down, that way. So, or here, back out. So, what you run into is this right here allows you to see if they're coming at high speeds, if they can actually decelerate and change direction, and if they can accelerate at a rapid enough speed. So, if this taking them a tons of time to do this, as far as in like, the longer it takes you to break, it lets me know we're dealing with maybe some elastic strength, maybe some positions, maybe we need to go back here and revisit some things as far as in how you're putting your feet on the ground and what you're dealing with. So, next, multiple responses. Now, this may be something where you're moving forward, you're moving backwards. I always stress in this particular phase where you're, if it's necessary, a lot of sports you only have to make one, one quick direction, directional change, and go. You have a lot of the field sports where you're not making a tons of, tons of, uh, I mean, sorry, you have a lot of the field sports where you're going to make multiple changes direction. Hey, I'm here, I'm square, now I'm going, try not to turn my hips. So, if it's necessary, work this. Make sure you have this foundation, then you move to the next step. Now, I always say increase the external pressure. You know, at the end of the day, we're trying to go game speed. Like, we, you, look, you want to train fast, you have to train fast. Sprinting in a straight line is the most specific thing to sprint in a straight line, so change of direction and, and reaction is going to be the most specific thing. Now, I think you can still get a lot of great uh, carryover from doing the drills faster, you know, hey, not so much time where the drill is broken down or jointed. Now, also, I would say, add some misdirection. Because you don't want to get kids to, or athletes in general, just thinking they're always going to come and stop. And I'm always going to go to the right. Because now they get in the game, and they go to the right, and the guy goes left, and they're like, but coach, in practice, we went to the right. <laughs> you... You want to work the misdirection because now you get them, A, to not anticipate, B, to make sure that they're going back to proper foot placement, body placement, and shin angles so that they can execute the skill that you want them to do. Last, game situations, competition. If, once you get down to this skill, this is where everyone tries to get to super fast. And the more, the more you progress through these skills, they get here and they're able to do this seamlessly. There, there's always going to be that, that moment of fatigue or um, where they're, you're dealing with an athlete of superior ability or an athlete who's fairly elusive and who knows how to work the misdirection in a different way. Also, you have physicality and fatigue. All those things will play a role. However, competition, that's Hey, we do all of this right here so that we can get to the point where, hey, I can run. I can change the direction. I can get in and out of a break. I can run a route. Um, you know, I can sell it. Whatever it is that I need to do, I can defend anyone. My hips, I'm able to move in any direction fluidly. And like I said, this right here are the tools and these are the tips that we've used over time to help our athletes maximize their agility and change the direction. So if you guys like the talk, um, have more questions, send me an email, uh, subscribe to the channel.